If you struggle with your photos looking flat and lifeless, the chances are you're overlooking the power of this one tool. I'm gonna to show you how we can transform this photo using nothing more than one tool in Luminar Neo. Although I'm using a landscape photo, we can take these techniques and use them equally well on any genre of photography. And if you're looking at the photo editor thinking, that'd do me for my photo editing, I've got a link with a discount code in the description below. Right, let's get into it. And the tool in question is the dramatic tool. The first thing I'm gonna do is just grab the amount slider and crank that up so that we can see exactly what this effect looks like straight out of the box. So here's our before and our after. As you can see, we're getting a lovely introduction of contrast into the photo, both global and that localized detail as well. However, we're also getting a desaturation of the colors. But just like any of the tools, if we take this look at face value and think this is it, this is the tool, then we're really not doing ourselves justice. We need to dive deeper. And that's exactly what we're gonna do here. We've only got four sliders, the main one being the amount slider. So obviously that just controls the amount of the effect that we're applying to our photo. Below that is our local contrast slider. So we can crank that up and get more definition and clarity throughout the entire photo. Things start to look pretty crunchy when you do that, but we can also drop that amount down, still get a lovely effect of contrast before and after, but we're not doing it with so much of that localized detail that we see when we push that local contrast slider up. The two sliders underneath, which I had hidden before, brightness and saturation, we wanna just click on that title so that we can see both of those and have access to them. So the brightness slider, which by default is set to 30, obviously brightens this effect up or gives us the option to add that contrast, but with a darkening effect. The saturation slider by default is set to minus 25, hence the reason we were heading towards a black and white photo, but we can also go the other way and actually saturate the photo as well. So even just with the settings as they are in the dramatic filter, already we've made a really nice change to this photo. So let's kickstart the edit with the tool looking as it does, but let's not push the amount all the way to 100. Let's build up these effects with a little bit more subtlety. Let's go somewhere around a third, 30% before and after a nice subtle introduction of the tool. For me, one of the biggest things about improving Luminar AI to Luminar Neo was the ability to reapply tools multiple times to our photos. Initially, it doesn't seem like a big deal, but as you'll see through this edit, by making adjustments to that tool and then selectively applying it to certain areas, it really is a big benefit to our editing. So for example, if I wanted to bring out more detail in all these lovely rocks here, but I wanted to keep the sky relatively smooth, then that's where we're able to do that with the dramatic filter, another application, and masking it in only over the rocks. So let's crank the amount all the way to 100 because it's so much easier for us to see what the sliders are doing than if we just went, oh, I only want a little bit of this, I'll set it at 12, and then you're changing the sliders. You can't really see exactly what's going on. So smash it all the way to 100, and then we can clearly see if we push the local contrast all the way up, it looks pretty blooming awful through the sky, but on the rocks themselves, the area that we're interested in, well, that's starting to add a really nice, interesting bit of detail and contrast. So with that in mind, we know that we're gonna benefit from improving the rocks by having that local contrast set quite high. Maybe not 100, let's go for something like 80. From there, I'll move down to the brightness slider and you'll see if I set this at zero, rather than it keeping everything kind of neutral, it actually creates more of a darkening effect through the photo. And that's why Luminar's default has this set at plus 30. But I actually think that the look that we have at the moment should have been what we see when this slider is at zero. But regardless, as long as we know that, we can make our adjustments from there. And what I like to do is grab the sliders within a tool and then just move them up and down. And as I'm doing that, I'm just staring intently at my screen and just watching the change that's going on. And that way I'm able to disassociate from the numbers that I'm seeing on the slider. And then I can make that decision as to where I think that slider should be set before and after. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Now we need to apply this effect only over the rocks. And there are many ways to apply masks in Luminar Neo these days, but I'm gonna go for object select AI, make sure the add mode is on, and watch this, as I mouse over the rocks, Luminar Neo's AI is smart enough to detect where those rocks are, and also the grass. So if you make a mistake with your masking, just press Control Z to undo it. But I'm just working my way across the front of these rocks here, just clicking on them, and now I can click the back arrow, and we will see that effect applied only to the rocks before and after, before and after. 
Usually I'll use that object select AI as a starting point for my mask and then refine it from there. So for example, what I'd like to do is just feather in a little bit more of this effect around the base of the rocks so it's not so abrupt. And then if I've got areas around the edge of the rock where we're just starting to see a little bit of haloing, I'm probably just gonna remove it from there. Halos are never something that we want to introduce into our photos before and after. Now, when we're editing our photos, it's important to control where the viewer's looking. We are literally like in control of an orchestra. You know, we are the conductor saying, look here, don't look here. We can amplify the hero of the scene, which are the boulders right here. Whereas the boulder on the left, because he's so close to the edge of the frame, I don't really want people's attention getting drawn over to the left-hand side here. And so that's where my masking would come in again. And I'll just use a brush with a strength set somewhere around half and then just remove that effect we created just from that rock over there, but only with a half. So we've still got a little bit of it, but not the full intensity before and after. Okay, let's see what else we can do with the dramatic tool. So again, crank the amount to 100. And this time what I intend to do is create that light sandwich effect that I've described before, where we're darkening down the top and the bottom of the frame, therefore helping to lead our viewer's eye to the central, more interesting part of the frame. So what I'm gonna do is just play with these sliders here, the brightness slider. Here I'm gonna bring the saturation up. Maybe 100% is just a little bit too much before and after. Yeah, okay, that's good enough. And because we're dealing with the sky that I don't want to get overly texturized, I've just dropped down the local contrast so that it's just sort of darkening things down with a nice level of contrast, but we're not getting all that crunchy detail that we would have got if we pushed that local contrast slider all the way up. And now we can come in and mask in that effect. I'm gonna use a linear gradient, bringing down that effect from the top towards the center of the frame and have a little look at that before and after. And then I'm gonna do the same from the bottom up so that we're getting a darker effect on the grass. And I just wanna leave a nice slither of light just underneath the rocks here. And that will help with the visual interest as well. Okay, so before and after. Okay, I'm just gonna go a little more heavy handed through the sky here, just get a bit more of that effect going on. Let's see, before and after, before and after. The effect is a little heavy handed just over the grass here. I feel like we're darkening things down just a bit too much. So I'll just remove that effect with the brush in a raise mode. Let's have a quick toggle of where we came from and where we've got to as we make our decisions about the next steps. So what I'd like to do is just really emphasize this area of grass here as if the light that's coming over the hills on the right hand side is just kissing across the landscape and also brightening up maybe this main monolith, big daddy right here. Let's see if we can't brighten him up. So again, I'm gonna close that effect down. And if you wanna reaccess any of those effects of dramatic, you can jump into the edit stack and then you can see that we have three applications of the tool, one, two, and three, and you're free to come back to any of those at any point and make adjustments. But we'll just keep pressing on, jump into another version of dramatic. We're gonna push that amount up again. We're gonna grab the saturation, make sure we're not losing any color detail before and after. And I don't really want the grass getting too crunchy like that. So I'm gonna keep the local contrast relatively low, but I do probably want to bring the brightness level up just a bit. Here's our before and our after, before and after. And now in the masking mode, if I select a brush, I can literally paint this effect in as if I'm doing a dodge and burn in the dodge mode, i.e. brightening things up. So if I just start to paint over the area that I want to be affected by this and brightened, and I'm doing this in a very rough and ready way, just so that you're getting the idea of this effect that I'm creating without this video going for forever. Let's have a toggle before and after, before and after. And we could lighten up the valley down here just a little bit as well. And once we've got those local adjustments done, if we wanted to, we could apply yet another instance of dramatic, keep the local contrast nice and low, make sure our saturation is kept nice and high so we don't lose color information. And as I said, when the brightness is at zero, things get a little too dark. So we'll just keep that at the default of 30. And now let's see before and after. Yep, that's a nice introduction of contrast, way too much at the moment, but now we know exactly where those sliders are set and looking pretty good. We can just tweak the amount slider to get this looking exactly as we want. Okay, that's pretty cool. Before and after, before and after.
I know that some people steer away from the dramatic tool because they don't want to desaturate their photo. And as I've shown here, that's not the case. We don't have to do that. We can leverage all of the benefits of the tool without any of those downside. And I would recommend taking this approach of a deep dive with every single tool in Luminar Neo, play around with it, push the tool to its maximum so you can really understand in depth exactly what that tool is capable of and then you're able to pull all of the tools together into a complete workflow. The Dramatic tool is just one of 39 tools inside Luminar Neo. How do I know that? Well, because I spent weeks going through every single tool, creating video contents, doing a deep dive, just like I've done here, so that you can fully understand exactly how to use them. Those videos are available in my Luminar Neo course, which has currently 50% off for my YouTube audience only. It's not a promotion across the website. You're not some rando just visiting my website. I'm very grateful for my YouTube family and that's why the promotion is here inside this video only so if you want to access that jump into the description there is a link and a promotion code as well not only does the course take you through each of Luminar Neo's tools in a logical progression we bring it all together into numerous examples and master classes so that not only are we learning the tools but we're learning how to apply them into a really what am I trying to say really nicely structured workflow so you can level up your editing. Right, let's have a look at where we came from and where we got to. This is my favorite bit, the before and after. Okay, here's our original, pretty flat, undynamic image. And here is the edit that we've created only with the dramatic tool. On the left is the original, and on the right, look at all that detail, drama, and fine control that we were able to get over this image before and after, before and after. So if we can do all of this with just one tool, imagine what possibilities open up to us in Luminar Neo with all of the editing tools. So I encourage you to dive deep into these tools, really understand them, and then start to build those tools one on top of the other for your edits so that you can precisely control where you wanna take that edit and where you wanna take your viewer looking at your photo. When it comes to editing landscapes, I've got a particularly soft spot for black and white photography. And if that's something that you've struggled with to create impactful black and white edits, I'd recommend you check out that video there where I explore some of my favorite techniques for really bringing your black and white photos to life. I'll see you in that video right there. Bye for now.